Very truly I tell you, you will see heaven opened and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. A very warm welcome to you all this evening to Christ Church for this service of evening prayer on the feast day of St. Michael and all the angels. It's wonderful to welcome you all here, and particularly good to welcome all those who are watching on live stream, who have spent the best part of the day in our festival of preaching. To all of them, wherever they are and however they are watching, we bid them welcome in the name of the Lord on this special day, and hope that they will join with us in prayer and find this time with us reflective, contemplative, and uplifting. Everything you need for this worship is to be found in the booklet before you or on the online order of service. O God, make, o God, make speed to save us. Your faithful servants bless you. Blessed are you, Sovereign God, our light and our salvation. To you be glory and praise for ever. Now, as darkness is falling, wash away our transgressions. Cleanse us by your refining fire, and make us temples of your Holy Spirit. By the light of Christ, dispel the darkness of our hearts and make us ready to enter your kingdom where songs of praise forever sound. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Please do sit down. Alleluia, praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise him in the heights. Praise him, sun and moon. Praise him, all you stars of light. Let them praise the name of the Lord. For he commanded and they were created. Praise the Lord from the earth. You sea monsters and all deeps. Mountains and all hills. Fruit trees and all cedars. Kings of the earth and all people princes and all rulers of the world. For his name only is exalted, his splendor above earth and heaven. The prophecy of Daniel, the 10th chapter, beginning at the 4th verse. On the 24th day of the first month, as I was standing on the bank of the great river, that is the Tigris, I looked up and saw a man clothed in linen, with a belt of gold from Uphaz round his waist. His body was like beryl, his face like lightning, his eyes like flaming torches, his arms and legs like the gleam of burnished bronze, and the sound of his words like the roar of a multitude. I, Daniel, alone saw the vision. The people who were with me did not see the vision. 
So a great trembling fell upon them, and they fled and hid themselves. So I was left alone to see this great vision. My strength left me, and my complexion grew deathly pale, and I retained no strength. Then I heard the sound of his words, and when I heard the sound of his words, I fell into a trance, face to the ground. But then a hand touched me and roused me to my hands and knees. He said to me, Daniel, greatly beloved, pay attention to the words that I am going to speak to you. Stand on your feet, for I have now been sent to you. So while he was speaking this word to me, I stood up trembling. He said to me, do not fear, Daniel, for from the first day that you set your mind to gain understanding and to humble yourself before your God, your words have been heard, and I have come because of your words. But the prince of the kingdom of Persia opposed me for twenty-one days. So Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help me, and I have left him there with the prince of the kingdom of Persia, and have come to help you understand what is to happen to your people the end of days, for there is a further vision for those days. While he was speaking these words to me, I turned my face towards the ground and was speechless. Then one in human form touched my lips, and I opened my mouth to speak, and said to the one who stood before me, My Lord, because of the vision such pains have come upon me that I retain no strength, how can my Lord's servant talk with my Lord? For I am shaking, no strength remains in me, and no breath is left in me. Again, one in human form touched me and strengthened me. He said, Do not fear, greatly beloved, you are safe. Be strong and courageous. When he spoke to me, I was strengthened and said, Let my Lord speak. For you have strengthened me. Then he said, Do you know why I have come to you? Now I must return to fight against the prince of Persia, and when I am through with him, the prince of Greece will come. But I am to tell you what is inscribed in the book of truth. There is no one with me who contends against these princes except Michael, your prince. Here ends the first reading. We have come before the throne of God, to share in the inheritance of the saints beloved. We have come before God's holy portal, to the heavenly Jerusalem, the city of the living God. We have come before countless angels begging the divine, before the
Revelation of St. John, the fifth chapter, beginning at the first verse. Then I saw in the right hand of the one seated on the throne a scroll written on the inside and on the back, sealed with seven seals. And I saw a mighty angel proclaiming with a loud voice, Who is worthy to open the scroll and break its seals? And no one in heaven or on earth or under the earth was able to open the scroll or to look into it. And I began to weep bitterly because no one was found worthy to open the scroll or to look into it. Then one of the elders said to me, Do not weep. See, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has conquered so that he can open the scroll and its seven seals. Then I saw between the throne and the four living creatures and among the elders a lamb standing as if it had been slaughtered, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent out into all the earth. He went and took the scroll from the right hand of the one who was seated on the throne. And when he had taken the scroll, the four living creatures and the twenty-four elders fell before the Lamb, each holding a harp and golden bowls full of incense, which are the prayers of the saints. They sing a new song. You are worthy to take the scroll and to open its seals, for you were slaughtered, and by your blood you ransomed for God saints from every tribe and language and people and nation. You have made them to be a kingdom and priests, serving our God, and they will reign on earth. Then I looked, and I heard the voice of many angels surrounding the throne, and the living creatures and the elders. They numbered myriads and myriads and thousands of thousands, singing with full voice, Worthy is the Lamb that was slaughtered to receive power and wealth and wisdom and might and honour and glory and blessing. Then I heard every creature in heaven and on earth and under the earth and in the sea and all that is in them sing. To the one seated on the throne, and to the Lamb, be blessing and honour and glory and might, for ever and ever. And the four living creatures said, Amen. And the elders fell down and worshipped. <laughs> rejoices in God my Saviour. He has looked with favour on his lowly servant. From, From this day all generations will call me blessed. 
The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him. From generation to generation, shown strength with his arm and has scattered the proud in their conceit casting down the mighty from their thrones and lifting up the lowly he has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty to the aid of his servant Israel, to remember his promise of mercy, the promise made to our ancestors, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory, Glory to, to the Lord, Father, and, and to the Son, and, and to the Holy Spirit, as, as it was in the beginning, now, is now, now and, and shall be forever. forever. Amen. Then I saw an angel soaring in the heavens with an eternal gospel to proclaim to all who live on the earth. seated on the throne and to the Lamb, be blessing and honour and glory and might for ever and ever. Amen. Welcome once again to this festival of preaching evening prayer 
and to all of you on this feast day of St Michael and all the angels. And before I say any more, let me please express my heartfelt gratitude on behalf of myself as Dean and all my chapter colleagues and all of us here at Christchurch for all of those who contributed to today to make it so special for all those engaged in the festival of preaching. There are many to single out and I particularly want to thank Christine Smith for her organisation and for all her colleagues, to the various sponsors we've had and of course to all our contributors as well and to all here who've worked so hard to enable this service this evening to be live streamed. I believe in angels and like many clergy I have spent a good deal of time sitting with people who are preparing to die. It is unfailingly a moving experience. It's both profound and a privilege. And I particularly recall a number of occasions, but here just one for this evening, as a young curate in Bedford, sitting with a frail old lady in one of the many care homes that were peppered around our parish as she moved gently from this life into the next, only occasionally recovering consciousness to talk about her hopes and fears and her faith. One day she told me a story about how she had personally met an angel. The year was 1970, 50 years ago. Enoch Powell had just made his famous rivers of blood speech 18 months earlier. Bedford was quite fertile territory for Powell's concerns. It was a town that had welcomed many immigrants from Asia, Africa, the Caribbean and the Far East in the post-war era to work in the hospitals and elsewhere. But it was a rather conservative, sleepy town. Tensions were very apparent and trouble was brewing. My friend, who was probably sympathetic to Enoch Powell's message but unsure, told me how she had gone down to the town hall one evening in winter to attend a meeting for residents who were concerned about the growing number of immigrants. It had been an uneasy few hours in passion, speeches, a lot of angst and a lot of things I guess people today would regret having said. When it ended, she stepped outside, only to discover the town covered in a thick blanket of fog, the like of which we don't really see today anymore, what you'd call a real pea super, courtesy of the River Ouse, Bedford's flat, low-lying, and when the mist rises from the river, it just sits there. She made her way back to her little Morris Minor, and as she was unlocking the car door, a large man appeared from behind and gripped her tightly to himself. She was afraid. She did not know how, but she had caught just enough of a glimpse of him to know that he was black weighed probably 15, 16, 17 stone, and was much bigger than her at 6'2 or 6'3. He held her from behind so tightly that she could barely breathe. She couldn't scream either, and she couldn't see anybody because of the fog. Yet she found herself feeling unusually composed and then for what seemed like an age when her breath was being squeezed out but can only have been a few seconds, she realised the man who was grasping her was crying, weeping. She struggled for breath but found herself asking him what was wrong. He replied through sobs in broken English that he was hopelessly lost. He had just arrived from Karakou, a small island in the south of the Caribbean, and had never seen fog or mist like this. He was afraid. His grip relaxed, and slightly to her amazement, she found herself driving him across town in her Morris Minor, 
where she dropped him off. And when they got to the address, he turned to her and said that he had prayed to God that night that he would send an angel to guide him to his family living on the other side of town, miles from the rail station, and that God had answered his prayer and sent him this little old lady and a Morris Minor. After he got out of the car, the woman broke down in tears and went home. She told me the story because she remembered the thing about the angel. She said he had prayed for an angel to guide him. But as she reflected on her life years later, she knew she was no angel. Rather, he was the angel. God had sent her an ambassador, a messenger, a stranger in disguise, a man made to confront her fears. And when she realized the stranger she was being taught to fear needed help and welcome, she had, as Abraham had done in the Old Testament, entertained angels. The things that grip tightly or grip us tightly are often for loosening. Today the church remembers St Michael and all the angels. He's an interesting character, St Michael. Not like the other saints, because he's not just an angel, but an archangel. So there's no date or place for his birth. And he's a shared saint as well, common to Christian, Jewish and Muslim traditions, who all revere him in slightly different ways. But here's the thing I want you to remember. The name Michael literally means one who is like God. So the leader of the angels is the one who is most like God. A popular story from World War II told by Brother Roger of Teze tells of a Romanian Christian who found himself imprisoned in Belsen and deprived of all he needed to sustain his faith in a concentration camp. No crucifix, no Bible, no icons, no devotional books, none of those knotted beads that are used in prayer. So he prayed in secret one prayer, and one prayer only, that he might respond to the call of love. He found himself very soon after spending time in the camp with the sick, the starving, the diseased, the dying, and the betrayers, and all who were shunned by others. One day, as the camp drew close to liberation, someone who had been a priest but had lost all faith came to see him and asked the Romanian, I see how you live here. Tell me about the God you worship. I see you even entertain the betrayers. And the Romanian replied, He is like me. He is like me. Few of us could ever say that we are like God. Few of us could ever say, like St. Michael, we are like God. But the calling on the feast day of St. Michael and all the angels is compelling. It is like Jesus to become the verb of God, to do God, to be like God, not just to speak, but to act, not just to think, but to become, to enter into the mystery of God's love and life and into that sense of incarnation so that we ourselves become angels who can entertain others, who can reach out to the marginalised, the poor, the stricken, the downtrodden. And so this evening on this feast day, we're invited to look into our hearts, to gaze at the angels who adore Christ, 
and to wonder at the sacrifices that those angels sit and watch and praise around. What random and costly acts of kindness and generosity can we do for others? How can we be angelic in this time, putting all before ourselves? Can we radiate warmth and peace, openness, hospitality, protection, grace, love and mercy? Can we be a beam of God's light and warmth in a world that sometimes seems dark and cold and lonely? Can our friends and colleagues say, hand on heart, that to know us is to have been touched by God? For the angels in our life, we give thanks. For those for whom we are angels in their life, we give thanks. For the calling of God to become ever more like him and ever more angelic, we ask for God's grace and wisdom. To the one seated on the throne and to the Lamb, be blessing and honour and glory and might forever and ever. Amen. Today on the feast of Michael and all angels, we celebrate the most warlike of all the company of heaven. Chief among the seven archangels and head of the celestial host, he is patron saint of Christians generally and Christian soldiers in particular, the one who is the most like God. But we remember also the other angels, Gabriel the messenger and Raphael the angel who led Tobias. God of visions and dreams, open our hearts to your heavenly glory. We rejoice that in Christ the victory already is. Be with us in the struggles of life. Keep us from succumbing to evil. Help us to see from the holiness of the ground on which we stand that we are before the gate of heaven. We join our prayers with the whole host of heaven making our petitions in the name of that same, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. <coughs> A cry was heard from thousands of thousands, saying, Salvation, honour and power to Almighty God. Alleluia. We pray for all who serve the Church of God on earth, for those who have participated in today's festival of preaching, we hold before God this cathedral and all who serve and work here, praying for its ministry to Christ Church for which it serves as college chapel. We pray for students already in, co in college, especially those in quarantine, for those preparing to come up to Oxford for the first time. And we remember residents in this city anxious about the effect of an influx of students on levels of the virus locally. God of messengers and heralds, open the hearts of all to your words of healing and peace. We pray for those who seek to interpret the world in the light of your good news, who challenge with prophetic voice. We pray for all who lead nations, for local councils and community groups, for the councils of the church, 
for all who engage with the struggle for justice and the common good, for all working to find a vaccine and cure for the virus. We offer these prayers in the name of your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. In a moment of quiet, we offer our own prayers to Almighty God, praying for all whom we carry on our hearts and minds. In the silence of this holy place, let us pray to the Father. The collect for today. Everlasting God, you have ordained and constituted the ministries of angels and mortals in a wonderful order. Grant that as your holy angels always serve you in heaven, so at your command they may help and defend us on earth. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. Uniting our prayers with the whole company of heaven, let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. 